I painted Gary in 2011 and Whitney in 2012. Gary is a Desert Storm vet. He had been a successful businessman once, but lost everything to drugs. Gary did not actively solicit money while I was painting him and seemed to be nodding off. At one point, I asked him if I was preventing him from making money. He smiled and said no. While I was painting him, a group of Chinese tourists stopped by and asked if they could take a picture. I said I didn't mind, but they'd have to ask Gary for permission. I also suggested that they give him a donation. After sitting very quietly all morning, Gary suddenly became aggressive and suggested they could have given him more money. Meanwhile, Gary's wife, Whitney, stopped by. She looked terrible, was wearing a face, mac face mask, and had only stubble for hair due to her cancer chemotherapy. Nearly a year later, I finally painted Whitney. We'd had a few misconnections, and this time I actually waited an hour and a half to paint her while she ran an errand. While we were waiting, Gary filled me in on the events of the past few weeks. First of all, he'd been arrested and spent 60 days in jail on what he maintains were trumped-up charges. While he was away, Whitney was robbed at knife point of her social security number, not money, then knocked unconscious. What is even more disturbing is that apparently I've already painted a portrait of her alleged assailant. As I've said before, I'm a terrible judge of character. This is a little scary. Whitney had also broken her foot, then decided she didn't like the cast and took it off. As a result, she needed to go back to the hospital and have her foot rebroken so it could be reset. Gary told me that her cancer had spread to her brain and down her spinal column. The doctors, he says, are unsure why she's still alive. Due to his run-in with the law, Gary was no longer allowed to stay with her in her rent-controlled apartment and had been fired from his 40-hour-a-week job as, his, as her caretaker. He's been sleeping on a park bench near the river and is contemplating suicide after Whitney passes away. In 2014, I painted Gary and Whitney again, this time as a couple. They were back on the street and practically begged me to paint them as they needed the money. They had been staying in a room provided by a homeless acquaintance who had lucked into marrying a foreign national seeking a green card who was willing to pay to marry an American citizen. Once her residence was established, she'd flown back to South America for a visit, and while she was away, their friend invited Gary and Whitney to move in. The wife had come home and thrown them both out. Needless to say, they were furious. On the plus side, Whitney is in remission from her cancer and looks very healthy. She was trying to pin down a shelter and needed to make a phone call at a certain time, but the battery in her phone was dead. So she needed to go into Panera to plug in her phone, but the manager at Panera was very rude to her and followed her around everywhere, even into the bathroom when she came into the store. Gary and Whitney made a point of buying a cup of iced coffee at Panera every morning so that they could establish themselves as customers. While we were painting, a personable young Asian woman came along and offered to buy Gary and Whitney food. She soon came back with a meal and sat down with them to eat. She is one of those rare but charming slacker Asians, completely Americanized, casual and, and aimless, an indication of what the children of today's obsessive Asian overachievers will be like. Eventually, another panhandler of the grubby youngster variety arrived, complimented her, and took her off with an offer to introduce her to the other pit denizens, with who, all of whom he was friends. He's not friends with them, Gary said after they left. She should be very careful around him. However, she came back about an hour later, none the worse for wear. Then a young man stopped in and asked them if they needed foam cushions to use as bedding. He also provided blankets. I later saw Susan at the tea stop with a new pillow still in its packaging, which I assume came from the same source. This is fairly typical of the largesse the good people of Cambridge bestow upon their homeless population.